Hey everyone, how's it going? I uh, don't usually do videos like this, but it turns out I've actually think I've worked out something that uh, means that you can get caps pretty easy in the game, and it comes down to this. The Atlantic City Dice Table. Um, so to summarise, for anyone that doesn't want all the info and like the super intricate meanings of why this works, all you got to do is keep betting 7, and eventually due to how odds work with two sided uh, two d6s um you're more likely to get a seven over time uh that is the general gist of it uh i'm gonna keep trying as i can but it is all luck at the end of the day so it may not work uh but as you can already see i'm getting results closer to seven but i got eight so i got ten you're very unlikely to get things like two and twelve and i'll explain that in a little bit but yeah keep picking seven and it should work over time. Um, there you go, five, that's only two off. So, right, first of all, what is this? How do you get this dice table if you can't pull? How do you use it at all? So, generally, there's two ways you can get it. You can either go, so here's a big map, here's a whole map. You go to White Springs, a White Spring North entrance. You go fast travel because it's free, and then you go to White Spring Mall, and then you wait for it to load. <laughs> um, so there's um, in the more recent updates since I've been back, it's been a while since I've been back, but I'm pretty new to the whole expedition stuff. But originally it was a pit. Oh no, not the mall. <laughs> not the mall. Uh, refuge. That's one. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty, as you can tell, I'm pretty new to this again. Um, Mr. Della Ripper only likes to organize his stamps. Cool story. Nothing else. Um, oh, that's actually relevant. Um, there's a new type of mission called Expeditions where you can, in fact, yeah, if you, as long as you're a team leader or and you can press square expeditions you go to the pit which was originally introduced or you go to atlantic city and then you do missions uh like atlantic city you can do tax evasion or most sensational game but if you go to tax evasion um part way through the mission you'll end up in the casino where you can find that dice table and you can just play it but there will be enemies around and you have to deal with those uh, but if you don't want to mess around with grinding and if you need that's the quicker way to do it or if you keep doing those expedition missions you will eventually be able to buy it from Giuseppe oh, I'm a good salesman. You should have you press to uh, trade stamps and then you'll have a list um, it will be around 70 stamps to buy it won't appear for me now because I've already bought it um, but yeah 70 stamps and you'll be able to buy the plan then you do what you normally do with plans, you go into your inventory, you go over to notes, and then it'll be a plan there and you press, you select it and then that's it, you've learned it. Then you go back to your camp, um, back over here, back to the spooky spooky camp. So that's how you get it, or you can, if you really want to take advantage of this, you can go into expedition, but eh. I feel like the people that probably benefit the most of the people who've got the plan and got in the camp and they could just chill with it, you know. So um, we'll enter my casino again, uh, which I've built it into this shelter. And uh, right, I'll try my best to explain my logic and how this works and why it does. Uh, so let's see. I've got notes down, so you may have to bear with me. <laughs> so I'll keep doing this in the meantime, though. Um, there you go, that was eight, that was close. So when I first came across this, so I've, I've had the roulette tables for a while, I've had the mechanical derby for a while, but um, I've only just recently got the dice table, and I thought, oh, I know how this game's probably going to work. you got 11 options. It's probably just going to be a 1 in 11 odds. And, you know, it will just pick a number between 2 and 12, and that's what it will be. But I've recently come to learn that if you throw 2d6, 
um, the result is more likely to land on seven uh, than any other number. Uh, this is because that when you roll two d6, um, if you add, in fact, I forgot the notes here. Uh, Google summarizes it pretty well if you search this up of why seven appears most on two d6s. Uh, it says if you add together two numbers, one through six, in all possible ways, seven comes up more often than any other sum, which is six times. Uh, that actually comes up to three. Uh, sorry, six in thirty-six odds, which brought down is one in six odds, um, as opposed to like trying to get a two on two d six is one in thirty-six, and that's because the only result on two dice that can create that eventuality is two ones, and that is it. Out of the thirty-six potential uh, results of rolling two d six, only two ones can produce a two. Same goes with 12. Only by rolling two sixes will produce a 12. No other combination. But with seven, you got various combinations. You got one plus six, you got two plus five, three plus four, and then the flip side, four plus three, five plus two, and six plus one. And then it, it sort of branches out from there. So the next most likely is eight and six then the most next most likely is nine and five then the next most likely is ten and three i think i've done that a bit wrong eight and six nine and five ten and four eleven and three two two, two and twelve that's it um but seven being the most frequent um so why is this applied to this game is because there are many different options in regards to the gambling shenanigans, but this produces uh, the only profit, a potential profit in regards to odds versus the cash out. So let's first look at the mechanical derby. So it's 100 caps to pay, but there's only five options. So that means there's a one in five chance of winning. Um, and I think that you only get 500 caps if you win, which means you only get five times the pay, uh, five times what you paid um, with just as many odds, which means you, on average, you'll be paying 500 caps for a chance to win 500 caps. So it equals out. Um, so yeah. So uh, with roulette, you've got a few options here. So um, you can either uh, go with um, red or black, which is one of two options, uh, but the payout is uh, 100. Bear in mind you're only paying 50 caps for any option here. Um, so, oh, well, that was odd. It said payout zero. <laughs> uh, payout 100. Um, so you got two options, twice the payout, which pretty much equals out because you'd be paying 100 for a chance to win 100. Uh, same with the first, second, and third options. Each of them, uh, 150, which is three times 50. Uh, so you'd be, on average, paying 150 for the chance of getting 150 on average. Um, those would be close to just accurate if it wasn't for zero, which means that it's slightly less than third and slightly less than one and two odds. Um, but with zero, it's a possible payout of 1,000. Um, which is actually 20 times 50, but is 1 in 37 chance of winning, which means on average you'd be paying 1,850, 1 times, uh, so t yeah, 50 times 37, 1,850 caps for a chance to get 1,000, so not worth the zero. Um, only worthwhile things are these, but to equalize. <laughs> Again, similar deal with the mechanical derby, basically. Uh, you're paying, yeah, no chance to get equal. But this is where it comes back to the dice. So, as I explained earlier, you've got a one in six chance of winning here yeah, due to the 2d6 logic that I described earlier. But you're paying 50 caps for a chance of getting 10 times the payout. So, um, well, bear in mind, just to clarify, I did start on 3,000 to begin with, and I'm now on 3,000. I was up to about 
500, but I did try also doing some testing on the mechanical derby, but we're <laughs> doing some money again. Oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Let's see if we can get another one while I'm just describing this. Uh, yeah. There you go, there's nine. That's more likely again. Um, yeah, so that's it to summarise, really. But should you just stop what you're doing now and follow Swim 6 and go out and do this to get all the caps in the world? Up to you. <laughs> uh, for me, this is a bit of a fun experiment and it worked out. I think, well, it's all down to look at the end of the day. There we go. But I think I'm right. <laughs> um, yeah. Nine, close again. Yeah, I think it's down to luck. It is all the chance you could just get consistent twos. You could get consistent twelves. It's very, very unlikely, but that's how luck is. Um, but for my theory here, you're more than likely going to get... This is the only result in regards to gambling. I'm not sure how what the slot machines are like. I've not got any slot machines yet or anything like that. I've just done this nice little bit of casino. There's, what I do advise, maybe, that might help, is using this to begin with, the Virgin, uh, the Virgin Year slot machine thing. Because you usually win something or something, but there you go. You feel lucky. Luck increased by two. I don't know if that makes a difference. Some veterans will definitely be able to tell me if that makes a difference or not, but all I know is just odds of rolling 2d6. Uh, which it seems to be what's happening here for me to get so many sevens. But what I want to point to you guys, try it yourselves. Try it yourselves. Let me know what happens in the comments. Um, let me know if I've got something here or I'm just being lucky or whatever uh but anyway thank you all for your time your take care <laughs>